Uh, like, he's, like she said, I'm Jeff Jody. I, uh, I work for Blue Coast Systems as a threat analyst. Uh, so basically what I do is uh, I click on stuff, um, just like all your kids do. I click on, on your computers and click on links. Um, then I get, I get Xfinity mad at me because I've got malware on my system and they give me these emails and say, hey, you've got malware on your computer and you need to clean it. Um, right now I have Zeus Neckers running on my network at home and I'm waiting for that email and I have not got one yet. Um, CenturyLink will cut you off the network, but Comcast does not care. They'll just send you a polite email and then tell you to use the product that I know does not work because it's not detecting it. So. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, malware and kind of the evolution of malware, especially exploit kits, um, how malware has become monetized and crimeware has got into malware and is using it now these days. Um, so we, we've gone away from malware being used by, by guys in basements as pranks to crimeware groups using them for money. Um, Perhaps not a guy like that, perhaps he looks more like that, uh, or at least he has, this guy has someone working for him that looks like that, but they, they are underground groups that are using malware as money and they're making lots and lots of money out of this. Um, so this is a uh, International Journal of, of Cyber Criminology, this uh, nonprofit group did a white paper talking about how these groups need leadership, structure, and specialization to be successful. And we can definitely see that as we track these crimeware groups of, of they definitely have these, these aspects. And we can see that they have a defined organization. They definitely have special, specialization. Uh, this is just a quick example about how these kind of groups uh, divide up work and conquer. Uh, this is an article from ZDNet. Um, organized cybercrime groups are now as powerful as nations. Um, I don't know if I believe that 100%. Um, they are quite powerful. Some of them are quite talented. I think the difference between the crimeware groups and the nation state groups is the nation state groups have more opportunity to flex their technical muscle because they're going after the hard targets. Um, for the crimeware groups, they only just need to make money. So if the lowest hanging fruit works, then it works, and they don't need to go any farther than that. Um, but just to show you how popular this stuff is, like this is the FBI's cyber most wanted list. Like their normal most wanted list, but this is their cyber most wanted list. And this is my friend Evgeny Malkovich something Russian. Um, this is the guy who's behind the Zeus Game Over botnet. Um, Zeus is a banking trojan, steals banking credentials so they can steal money from you. Uh, the source code for Zeus has been out there for a long time. There's been a ton of variants. This variant kind of took off and became much more popular. So he added a peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure to it. So the CNC callouts weren't to a central server that someone like Kaspersky could take down and, and everybody wins. So they're peer-to-peer, -peer, so they talk to all sorts of other compromised hosts in order to get the information that they need. Um, these were the guys that were distributing CryptoLocker. How many people have heard of CryptoLocker? Yes, everyone's heard of the popular one. Um, they, the, the FBI did try to take down his botnet a while back, um, and they never completely go down. So he is back doing some stuff, not, as, not at the peak as what he once was. But to show how, uh, how uh, important these guys are and how successful, see, he has a $3 million head price on his head right now for anyone who leads to the capture of him. Uh, $3 million is, is a nice price to have on your head. It shows how successful you are. Um, on an unrelated note, we're going to take a trip to Russia. If, if anyone is interested in going to Russia, call it a retirement plan. But uh, yeah, so he's popular. And the other reason they started to make more money is they've, take, they've taken malware and they've made it easy for non-technical users to use. So kind of like the instant black hat or it's, it's the Photoshop elements of Photoshop. So you basically, if you have enough money, you can just buy everything you need and you can be instantly owning a botnet. And so we'll break these down. So first you just got to buy a Trojan. Um, so here's Citadel, here's SpyEye, 
Uh, Zeus is, is a very popular one. Spy Eye, the guy retired and he sold his source code. Um, Pony is actually a downloader, so they're a little bit different. They, uh, they're manually just getting on the machine and then downloading more malware. But you'll, you won't get source code, you'll just get a, uh, a builder like this. So you can build a payload with all of the settings and everything that you want. So you buy the botnet, you buy the Trojan, and then you gotta buy a cryptor. Because the source code is known to all these AVs, so they'll detect it. So cryptor is uh, it's a way of encrypting your malware. Um, they'll call it FUD. They'll call it fully undetectable on these, on these Russian hacker forums. Um, but basically, there's lots of mechanics they can do to, to do this. They can throw in uh, APIs that don't mean anything. They can throw in random assembly code into the code that doesn't mean anything. But basically, you're just trying to change the hash enough and the signatures enough so they won't be detected. And then this is how we get, you've seen those reports about there's 500 billion malware out there today, you know. Um, there's not, there's like four. Uh, <laughs> Everything's like Zeus. Last year in Malware was like Zeus, Zeus, and Zeus. And if you got anything else, it was like Christmas Day, because it's like, oh, it's not Zeus, how exciting. So they, they buy like two or three of these and put them in different settings, run it through it, and you have a whole different hash. And then you regurgitate it in a different way, and you, and you can get just all the different hashes you could possibly want. And so that's how you see those inflated numbers of, look at all these Malware, that's the cryptor. You buy the exploit kit, and that's what we're going to go into deeper. Um, an exploit kit basically just distributes your malware on the internet. This is the drive-by downloads, essentially. And then you buy traffic. You buy web traffic. So what does that mean? Has anyone heard of that before, buying web traffic? A couple of people? PDS, exactly. So there's some malicious actors out on the web that they specialize in driving user traffic so you, you, when you're browsing the internet, driving your traffic to specific people or whoever is the highest bidder. Uh, we call them gates or TDS. Um, think of it as a malicious web advertisement company. So you can say, I want people from this demographic, from these countries, from, you know, you can be very specific of what kind of traffic you want. Uh, I wrote this before I knew this was recorded. So uh, we're not fans of web, web ad of analytic companies. Um, but mostly they just compromise WordPress sites. Um, they, they write crawlers that just go off in the internet and they compromise plugins and, and WordPresses that are out of date. They inject code onto those websites so that they will load whatever they want in the background or redirect you somewhere else. Um, There's a few other methods. Um, so other botnets will pay to just put traffic on their computer. So they'll just start reaching out to other things. Um, the classic is spam. Spam botnets will, will pay to, to send you stuff. Um, and also malvertising, which we'll get into deeper. Um, and these TDS guys, they kind of border in between the dark and the gray area. They, uh, they have legitimate uses and legitimate people using them, but they also have a lot of shady stuff. Um, so one day you'll hit this TDS gate and you'll get malware, and then the next day they'll send you to an adware company, which is legit. So I mean, this is a legit Oppermizer Pro. They do have a legit business operation. We get phone calls from them saying, why have you marked us as pus and adware? And we just send them to our definition and say, <laughs> read in between lines. Um, one day you'll get spam. You'll get, you'll go to TDS and you'll hit this, you'll get spam for, you know, get a free Best Buy gift card or something like that. And then the next day you'll hit it and you'll get the doctor's diet scam stuff. Um, not that the doctors aren't scammy enough, but, but it's always some fake. Me and my wife like to go to the Walmart because in the clearance aisle you'll see the latest trend that's the, uh, like it used to be Cambodia. Garnesia Cambogia, and now it's a new one, it used to be raspberry ketones, and they show up now at the clearance aisle of Walmart because it's, it's a fad. Um, Asprox was a very popular uh, botnet, um, was, they still are, I believe. But uh, the spam people they were paying to deliver their payloads and their spam um, suddenly stopped. And now they're just delivering good old classic Viagra spam and stuff like that. So I don't know if they lapsed in their payment to these spam people or whatnot, but, but you can see how they can just change around really quickly. 
Um, so to go into what the exploit kit is, the drive-by download, uh, I kind of consider it like the opposite of an AV. So what they'll do is they'll rent an IP or server, usually somewhere where we don't have a lot of jurisdiction. Rob's gonna take me, yell at me now. Um, so like Russia or Ukraine or somewhere where we can't do anything about it. And, and then they'll wait for someone to hit that site. So through a TDS, they go to a compromised website. There's JavaScript on that page that loads something in the background or an iframe or something like that. And then they send you this big blob of just JavaScript. And it's just a big ugly blob of JavaScript. And what that is, it's the obfuscated JavaScript. To obfuscate so you can't tell what it's trying to do. But once it actually runs, it's basically using a Java or a JavaScript library called Plugin Detect. And it's looking for the plugins in your web browser. So like Java and Flash and a PDF and stuff like that. And when it finds one that's vulnerable to an exploit, they'll give you an exploit along with a downloader that can just download the malware of your choice. So this is a dashboard. So a lot of these come with dashboards so you can see your statistics. So this is a black hole exploit kit. So you can see uh, the type of OS's you're hitting, the type of browsers and the exploits. Uh, the big scary number up there is the uh, percentage of, of ex successful exploits you've gotten. They'll always advertise on the, on, on the hacker forums, like you'll get 25% of all your traffic will be exploited. And then you always find a ton more uh, forum posts from people complaining about like, eh, I only got like 12% and, and they're all upset. Um, so from what I've gauged is like really from 12 to 15% is really what you see normally. Uh, these are the, all the exploits that are being successful. And there's become a marketplace for this. So all these people are competing for other people's business. I mean, it's a legitimate um, capitalist market of just whoever does the best exploit kit wins. And so they pride themselves on, on who's got the best exploit kit and who obfuscates their JavaScript best and then can change as much. Uh, this is old Serenity exploit kit. They're gone now. But they used to do their own black hat version of virus tool. So you could take your payload, your, your payload you've crypted and everything, and you can see which antiviruses are detecting it currently. Um, Black Hole Exploit Kit did this as well. Um, and the second a few of them start to detect, they'll change your payload for you. So you won't get detected by AVs. And then there's lots of other things that they've done. Uh, Angler Exploit Kit did the Flash Zero Day that was like, what, three or four weeks ago. Um, Sweet Orange combined with a T TDS, and so they would say, hey, come get our exploit kit. We will send you 150,000 unique visitors to your exploit kit a day. Um, <coughs> who knows if that was true, but that's what they claimed. And then we can't go on without talking about Black Hole. Black Hole exploit kit is, was the king of, black, of exploit kits. Uh, a lot of AVs, even today, when they detect an exploit kit, they'll call it Black Hole even though Black Hole was gone. Um, there was some competing for him, but he really was the king. He, he made it sexy. He made it efficient. He was really well done. And then he took all that money, he created Cool Exploit Kit. And so it, to do an analogy, like this is the Toyota Camry of exploit kits, this would be the Mercedes Benz. So he claimed he took $100,000 and bought a bunch of zero days. You know, he, this was gonna, it was a lot more expensive to rent than the other ones. 500 a month compared to like 10,000 a month for Cool Exploit Kit. We always thought that this was going to be the uh, judgment day when these all these zero days start flooding out to the internet from the Cool Exploit Kit. It never happened. Um, I just think, I think it was all BS. Um, I just, you know, when someone offers a product that's more expensive but it's basically the same thing, you always get some people who will pay for that more expensive product. And I think that's what he was doing there. Um, unfortunately, the guy who ran Black Hole Exploit Kit, his name was Punch. He got arrested. Um, that sexy devil there, that's Punch. That, that guy kept me employed. Um, Punch is like Russian slang for, oh, you might know. It's Russian slang for like fat or donut or something like that. And uh, some people got offended by that. But like it's his own name. He called himself Punch. So. So, so when he got arrested, 
um, the market just exploded. So there was the king was was gone, and now everyone was free to fill in that market, and uh, everything started taking off from there. So so when I was younger, that's me. And I well, when I first started working at Blue Coat, uh, I've been there about two and a half years now. Um, these exploit kits, even black hole, were so much simpler, um, and they were easy to detect. And I thought I was just an infosec super guy because I could detect these things. Um, is a comp is a website compromised and leading to exploit kits? It was quite easy. Just view source. And the scroll bar on the on the window would go really tiny because at the very top or bottom you'd see this script with an eval call and this incredibly long parameter, and that's basically the obfuscated code. So it was 100% easy every time to figure out if these sites were compromised. <coughs> it was almost always WordPress pages, um, bar none. Um, any other website, it was very rare to see any other type of website get compromised. They mostly did Java, 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 and it was all just Java exploits. And then creating the signatures were so much easier, because that's what I do at Blue Code. I'll, I'll find these malware and stuff, and I'll create signatures for the, for the delivery, for the exploit kits, for the CNC servers. <coughs> they go into our proxy, so they protect our customers from it. Um, they would use strings that were completely unique on the internet. We see a lot of traffic. We get what is it, 70, 50 billion log lines a day or something like that, it's ridiculous. We basically see a good portion of the internet. And they would use strings that were completely unique to the entire internet. How easy is that for an IOC or for a signature? Um, however, that quickly changed. Um, Cal Security, he does this blog where he talks about the most wanted exploit kits and he does it in this uh, uh, Wild Wild West presentation. Um, so the market kind of exploded. So here's a lot of the popular exploit kits that are out now. It used to be Black Hole and maybe a couple other players, and now there's just a ton of them. Uh, some of the big ones, Rig Exploit Kit, Fiesta Exploit Kit, Sweet Orange, Angler, like I said, did the zero days. Um, just big popular ones. And then we'll see a lot of them that will come and go. So they'll come, and then they'll disappear for a while, and then they'll come back eventually. Um, Sticks exploit kit there. Um, Gongda is a Chinese exploit kit. It's been around for several years, but it just shows up, does some work, and then it disappears and we don't see it again. Um, so it's hard to keep track of these when they keep disappearing and coming back and all that. And then there's a ton that just never come back at all. Because these exploit kits are decently easy to write. It's just plug and detect and then a, a database back end. It's pretty simple. So we see newcomers come onto the market, and then they'll shoot up into the market and be incredibly popular, and then they'll just die and go away, and we never see them again. And so there's a lot that come and go away, and we never see again. Uh, Impact exploit kit, that was a good one. I get really, uh, I like to reminisce and look at these old exploit kits, and oh, it's so, I miss you. <coughs> but there's a lot, and there's a lot. And there's a lot, lots of exploit kits. And it's difficult to keep them straight. So a lot of these are sold on underground markets, hacker markets. So they have some type of marketing and, and graphic design. Uh, Styx exploit kit was actually the first one to have an open website. It was stickscript.com, and you could just go there to buy the exploit kit, open on the web. You didn't have to go through Tor. You didn't have to go on a Russian hacker form. Um, they called it a Browser Vulnerability Stress Tester. <coughs> so if they have a logo, it's easy to keep track of them. So there's Sweet Orange, Rig. Uh, this was my favorite. They're gone now, but Crime Boss, how cool is that? You know, you got a gun and monies, and, and uh, I don't know what phone that is. It says 2012 up there. I, it's like an old <coughs> Google phone. Yeah. Yeah, the code down, of course, a crime boss has to have code. Um, uh, there used to be an exploit kit called Pop Ads Exploit Kit, mainly because it exploited a, a web analytic company called Pop Ads, the pop ads that show up in your browser that are annoying and you always click away. 
Um, and then it changed and morphed, and it came back, and no one knew what to call it. So this researcher from Emerging Threats was uh, researching this, this exploit kit, and he was watching the TV show Community. You ever seen the TV show Community? Anyone? No? <coughs> a few. I haven't watched it much. But apparently there's a guy on there called uh, Magnitude. He's some actor or something, celebrity or something like that. And uh, his, his catchphrase is pop, pop. And he just screams that every few seconds. And so this researcher was, was, uh, was researching this exploit kit, watching this at the same time, and he just thought, well, let's just call it Magnitude Exploit Kit. So, so this exploit kit became Magnitude Exploit Kit. Um, we actually found out later on a, on a Russian forum that it's called Top EXP. That's what the exploit kit's called. But that's boring. And uh, Magnitude is so much cooler. And so even today, everyone in the, like, the AV industry, we still call it Magnitude Exploit Kit because the one researcher from Emerging Threats. Um, so it's hard to keep these exploit kits on, on the same page when everyone's calling it different things. Um, it's part of my bucket list that I want to name my own exploit kit when I find my first exploit kit. Um, I will name it something like Fluffy Exploit Kit or something like that so it will stick forever. Um, this is Red Kit Exploit Kit. Um, gold star for whoever can name the reason why it was called Red Kit Exploit Kit. <laughs> it was discovered by Spider Labs, I think. And they didn't speak Russians, and it was red, and so it was, it's Red Kit Exploit Kit. Um, red Kit was very different for a couple reasons. Uh, one day I came across this website. Um, what do you think about this website? Pretty generic. Um, a lot of times we'll find command and control servers and malware sites, and they have these gen generic templates on their website with a lot of stock photos to kind of fool a researcher to say, nothing to see here, you know? These are not the websites you're looking for. Um, I totally thought that was it. Uh, my wife works at Blue Coat with me. She does a lot of spam stuff. She looked over my shoulder and said, hey, these are the same stock photos that the uh, Canadian pharmacy Viagra scam people use. And I was like, oh, really? So that's, it's totally got to be a fake website. This is a fake website. But what bugged me is there's a phone number up there at the top. And so I thought, why would they put a phone number? I've never seen a phone number on these fake template websites. So I thought, I'll just call this website. I'll call this number and I'll see what happens. Expecting to get nothing disconnected or something like that. Or at best, maybe someone from far away who's going to tell me my computer is infected and you know something like that. I call it, and I get this lady, nice lady. She's just like, hey, hey. And, and, and so I ask her, uh, well, can you tell me a little bit about your, your services or your business? And she talks to me, and it looks like a legitimate healthcare company. And so it's like, OK, we don't really contact the compromised website pages and try to help them very much, because there's just way too many. There's no, it's impossible. But so since I'm there, I was like, okay, oh, well, I'm a researcher from Blue Coat. Your, your computer is infected, and, or your website's infected, distributing malware, da 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 da. da and it just phew, right over the poor lady's head. She has no idea um, what I'm trying to say. She kept asking me, like, sir, do you have any questions about our healthcare services? Um, eventually, I got to the manager, and I was able to show him that the website was kind of broken. Every link you clicked on was a 404 error, which which I, uh, why I definitely thought it was a fake website. So I was able to show him that at least and say, hey, you need to get your website fixed. But what this actually was is this was Red Kit Exploit Kit. So what they did instead, where like Black Hole and all the other ones had a central server in Russia or somewhere else, they used all compromised websites. So you go to a compromised website, you uh, get redirected somewhere else, the exploit will come from another compromised website, the downloader comes from a different compromised website. All the statistics are sent to a whole different compromised website. So their whole infrastructure is spread throughout compromised websites. <coughs> to, to rent out the exploit kit, you had to go to the, another compromised website where they tacked on a few pages where you could fill out a form and request, I want to rent this exploit kit. So it was very unique and very difficult for us at Blue Code because 
I mean, there's so many compromised sites, it's hard to flag them all, but we can always flag that central server the, where the actual exploit kit lies. And so they can go down the chain, but we'll block them there and our customers are protected. But with all these compromised websites and everything's compromised, you get collateral damage. And so we block these websites for our customers and then they complain and all that. And so I really thought this was gonna be the future of exploit kits. Um, there was an exploit kit called Infinity or Goon, whoever you ask, that was mimicking this as well. Um, and this was really popular for a time and then suddenly just disappeared and it's gone now. And we really haven't seen it since. The only thing I could say is probably just, there must be just logistic problems of keeping all of your data and all your files too, um, all your code on servers that you don't really own um, but that was an interesting exploit kit. They've got better up, up, at their obfuscation. Um, the obfuscating their stuff used to be really easy. Um, tools like Wepawet and, and these automatic the obfuscators would do it really simply. You could, you could easily see the shell code. You can easily determine what CVE they're exploiting. But now they usually have like two or three layers of obfuscation and it's much harder to do. For their Java stuff, they'll do this uh, Java class called pack. Um, so they'll pack their jars, so it's harder for the AVs to scan. Um, this is a commercial tool for Flash, to pack Flash files. And uh, <coughs> I think Nuclear Exploit Kit has started using these ones. So it's harder for the AVs to, to read the Flash files. Don't worry, I'll dog on I'll Flash soon. <laughs> Sorry for my Adobe friends. Um, and then they, they, they started encrypting everything. So all the strings, all the payloads are encrypted, which makes it a pain because you have to pull it out of memory just about. Um, I think Magnitude Exploit Kit's the only one who will just give me a plain, plain exe file. Um, more exploits. They definitely have expanded to using more exploits than what they did before. Um, let's play a little game, shall we? Uh, let's do a little word association. So I'm going to say a word, and you just scream out whatever you think comes to first thing to your mind. So, uh, so let's start with like Microsoft. Okay. Um, what else? B sides. Okay. Java. Yeah. So Java has a bad rap. For, for <clears throat> all the zero days they had a couple of years back, being very vulnerable. It was a big selling point of uninstall Java, uninstall Java, don't have Java on your machine. Um, that's actually not the case anymore. The, the big popular thing for the exploit kits right now is our big friend Flash. Flash is the new Java right now. Um, they've even started to, to uh, drop their Java exploits from their exploit kits. So there, there are far, mere, far fewer Java exploit kits in the web right now than there ever have been before. Um, and the only reason I can say for that is just it's, it, people are aware now. And so people are focused on Java, they're gonna move to something else and they're not gonna pay attention to Java anymore. Um, but Flash is really getting to be the popular guy. And also they try to avoid common JavaScript. So uh, like I said, they use plugin detect is just a JavaScript library, so they can just do a bunch of loops to figure out what versions of plugin you're of, of the browser plugin you're using. Um, we used to quite, I mean, quite literally, we would see this compromised domain, and they would tack on a file called plugindetect.js, and they, that file, the only file, the only people on the internet using that file name are the exploit kids, and so it was so easy to catch them. But AVs are aware of that. AVs will detect that. AVs are paying attention to that. So now the, most of them use the, a custom library of some sort so they can figure out what you're using. Um, pay attention that they're using ActiveX to figure that out, what version of plugins you're using. Uh, that's a little table of, of who uses what. A, a few of them still use plugin detect. They have other measures so that they don't get detected but they'll get rid of that plugin detect so they don't get detected. Is there a way to minimize the amount of JavaScript I expose? So could we take it another step further? So not show the AV any JavaScript at all. 
or at least as, as few as possible. So what a lot of them are doing is they're using our nice friend Flash, and they will drop a file on your machine, a, a Flash file, and it's not malicious per se, it's just for the JavaScript, or the action script, which is basically just JavaScript. So that, that JavaScript and the Flash file will do all the scanning and all those things, so the AV now has to uh, parse that in order, in order to figure out what is this thing doing and is this malicious. And then just the flash exploits in general have gotten really hard to detect as well. Um, this came from Nuclear Exploit Kit. Um, it's always a fun day for me when I see the flat zero there on virus toll for no hits. Um, that's not terribly uncommon um, from my experience. So this is the exploit file, exploit downloader. Usually um, we'll start to see detections within like two or three hours of when the file first shows up. I mean, AVs, you can dog on AVs a lot, but they're just, they're good, they're just a bit slow. Eventually they'll start to catch up. But what was interesting about this is it has a couple votes. So in VirusTool you can vote and say, well, I think this is bad. And it has a couple votes already, so it's like, thought, who voted for that? Um, Caffeine, he's a, a French security researcher, uh, does a lot of good work, and I saw he voted for this two days ago. So this file has been on the internet for almost two and a half days, and it still is getting no detections. And I thought, that's crazy. How are they doing this? So I kept paying attention to it. Next day, nothing. Next day after that, nothing. This is three days after I first found that file, so five days from Caffeine's found it. Found it. Still nothing. <clears throat> oh, Lenovo Solution Center. Scheduled hardware scan. Oh, I hate you, Lenovo. This is stupid. Oh, are you not going to? No, postpone. Shut up. No comment. Um. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that he had something to do with Punch being arrested. Well, yeah, well, not that. Mm hmm. Or in the U.S. where they can, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and most of them have pretty bad code, you know, simple cross-site scripting and SQL injection, stuff like that. Um, so this is actually two weeks after that file, and it still only has three detections on that Flash file. Um, so I went into look, well, why is this, yeah, we should all be scared of Flash. Why is it so FUD? Why is it fully indetectable and all that? Um, so this is that file in hack. Anyone recognize that file header? It's what? I can't hear you. Um, sorry. Uh, so Flash should have a CWS header. That's the normal Flash. ZWS, uh, I did not know what that is. And if you look at the hex, it kind of looks encrypted. It just, it's pretty random. Um, it's actually a packer. LZMA compression, has anyone heard of that? Um, I had not heard of that much. I went on the internet, could not find too much about it, but is, it is a flash packer. Um, WinZip uses it, or, or sorry, 7-Zip, but it's a, it's a different packer, and so the AVs must be having trouble with this packer for flash because it's not really detecting this stuff much. Um, avoiding detections. So this is, I mean, when I first started, I could easily get a website to exploit me all I wanted. Now they're doing more to avoid that. So this comes from Angular Exploit Kit. So again, they're using uh, ActiveX, which is your friend. And uh, they're looking at your system files, they're looking at your drivers. And so uh, that KLL, that's Kaspersky. That's a Kaspersky driver. And these other ones are Trend Micro and some other ones. So they're looking for a specific AV on your computer to see if you have it. And if, they, if you have it, they just won't exploit you and they won't, they won't touch you. Um, and I just thought that was incredible that you could go to a website and your browser can read your system files on your computer. If that's not a reason why you shouldn't use Internet Explorer, I don't know why. I don't know what else I could do to convince you. ActiveX. Ugh. So they look for AVs. Uh, they also look for VMware. Again, I, I use a lot of virtual machines for detection and stuff like that, so that's been a pain in the butt for me that, that uh, 
I can't use that anymore. Um, Cisco or someone claims that nuclear is doing this with their TDS. So the TDS will actually check this for you first before they send you off. I have not found that myself personally. I can still get exploited by, by nuclear on a VM machine. Um, TDSs do do that though. They can check what country you come from and stuff like that and send you somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. They'll send you to legitimate sites sometimes just to fool you. Fool you. Um, so here's kind of a chart of that, of the different ones that, that they're detecting. Um, Rob Lee and, and, and some of the SANS guys are big fans of Orson Scott Card and the Ender's Game series. And there's a big part where he says, uh, Mazer Rackham has a quote about, uh, the only enemy, the only teacher is your enemy. The only enemy, the only your enemy can teach you where you're weak, where you're strong and all that. And I thought this was an amazing chart because if anyone out there is looking for an AV vendor, these are the ones that the exploit kits don't like and they will just prefer to avoid them rather than, yeah, see Kaspersky's on there. Trend Michael's on there, which kind of surprises me a bit. Um, ESET and also, I'm sorry, this is being recorded. I should not be saying these things. My views do not represent my employer or uh, sandbox evasion. Uh, these are popular now for a lot of the downloaders. They'll do a lot of sandbox evasion. Um, this was one I got from Magnitude Exploit Kit. Um, see how some of these have been renamed counter. Um, it basically has five or six different counters. And so the malware just sits there and just twiddles its thumb as he just counts to like five billion a couple times. Um, and, and why would you do that? Because the sandbox is just going to time out eventually. He just, that, that, oh, this sample didn't do anything. So, and there's lots of different ways to evade sandboxes. Uh, um, you can look at the processors. You can look at how much uh, memory you have. I heard of one sample that looked at the desktop background picture. And if you had the default Windows XP rolling green hills, he just deleted himself. It's a sandbox. Because who has that desktop background? Who has XP anymore? <laughs> so uh, lots of different ways to evade sandboxes. Um, so we're going to go through ex some examples of some of these exploit kits and what they do. Follow the kill chain a bit. I won't explain that too much. Um, so Angular exploit kit, this is one of the popular ones. Cisco claimed this to be the new black hole and the king of exploit kits now, and uh, kind of. Um, they'll, sp they'll send out spam. They'll use spam guys to send out links to send them to your exploit kit. Um, but a lot of compromised sites, they'll do fake search engines. Um, pretty much my rule of thumb is you use Google, Google, and Google. And if it's not Google, then you should not be typing anything into it. Uh, we'll get customers who want to go to these. I want this search engine. No, you don't. It's malvertising. Uh, we're going to go deeper into this one later. Uh, so the compromised sites, they're, they're CMSs, they're WordPress, they're just doing other things like that. Um, they'll just inject code into like different JavaScript files or things like that on, on that website. We get a lot of uh, false positives from AV and JavaScript. JavaScript must be just difficult for them to parse and understand. A lot of times they'll send you to an intermediary domain, just a domain that just gives you a 302 redirect or, or an iframe to somewhere else. That's one for Angular. And then malvertising. Um, so I want to do a poll. If I say the word malvertising, how many people in this room could stand up and explain to me in somewhat detail about what is malvertising and why is it a threat on your network? Of course you can. How many people? All right, so if you were sleeping for the rest of this talk, this is the time to pay attention. Because malvertising is kind of like the rabbit hole of, of what we do at Blue Code. It's just this big rabbit hole we dive into and it's just a mess and it's terrible. So what malvertising does is they take, they go to legitimate web ad companies they take out a malicious ad, and then they distribute it through that, through that legitimate web, web ad company. So like what we'll see a lot is we'll see like this is a legitimate website, and it's got a search bar. Oh, how nice. Well, but every time you search, they always show you ads. So they'll search for something, a malicious ad will show up, and exploit you and send you to that exploit kit, basically. And everyone kind of does it. Um, everyone's involved in this. All the, all the legitimate web ad companies, they all have problems with this, um, especially ad cache. 
Um, I doubt anyone here has heard of AdCache or, or you know, you don't, that's a special kind of nerd. But AdCache is a web ad company. They've actually talked to us a couple times and we kind of tongue in cheek talked to them back because they have such a dirty network. Everything pretty much they distribute is so bad. Um, what does this look like? It looks like Flash, but it's not Flash. This actually sends you to Adware Plus, potentially unloaded software. They'll do fake AV stuff. Uh, they'll even do mobile stuff. If you're on mobile, they'll pay attention to that and send you to mobile now. Um, this is my friend Daisy. We had a nice conversation. They were, you know, spammy, scammy type of dating sites, whatever. Um, yeah, they just have such a dirty network. And why is this so awesome? Um, essentially what they're doing is, is all these websites have no idea what's going on on their own website. So to kind of put an analogy, if, I, if you owned a website and it went up to you and said, hey, can I rent your conference room? I'm going to rent your conference room and I'm going to put posters on your windows of the conference room so your people can see it. Win-win. I give you money, you don't. Say you're a, say you're a business that's kind of in decline like, like a newspaper or something like that. So you know, you'll see why. Uh, so you do that. So you exchange money. The first day they show up and they go in their conference room and they put your posters. Everything's great. The next day they show up with five of their friends. Who are these guys? I have no idea. They're in my conference room. Next day they show up with 20 of their friends. You have no idea what they're doing because these big web ad companies, they take ads from smaller web ad companies who take ads from smaller web ad companies. And somewhere down that chain, someone didn't vet the ad that they received, and then they load them up into all these ones, and then these legitimate, ad, these malicious ads are being displayed on big name brand websites. LATimes.com, you name the website, we've seen malvertising come from it. Um, and so it's insanely popular. I don't have to exploit websites anymore. I can just put out a malicious ad and all these popular sites that get tons and tons of traffic. Oh. <laughs> I didn't think that was a funny part. It's like, what are they laughing at? It's a sad part. You should be sad for malvertising. Four hours postponed. <laughs> Lenovo bloatware. Oh, I'm sorry. You want to hear that story? Um, so so uh, I've requested a Mac, have not got a Mac. Um, this is the software for my IT department. I should turn this off. <laughs> Malvertising. <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yeah, so all these big sites, they, they do it, and no one knows what they're doing. Um, so you know the, the app Ghostry? little plug-in for your browser will show you how many ads are showing. So just to give you an example of how many people are doing this, um, I, I kind of ran through some of these companies and see you know, on their websites how many ads are they loading. Um, Amazon had 18. Uh, I checked Blue Coat. Uh, they only had five. That was good. Well, good. Five's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's the third parties. It's. Um, um, I I used to think that the internet was you know the internet's free because of advertising so I didn't use AdBlock and I've definitely changed that now, but but even AdBlock they uh, they have certain ad providers that pay them money now so they will let those ads in and like I said it's changed from ch third parties from third parties so none of them I've been using uBlock right now um, I've had a decent success with that right now thumbs up over there um, it's a it's definitely more aggressive than um, ad block, but uh, that's been successful. So anyways, yeah, AV companies, uh, Kaspersky, unfortunately had 23. 
Um, Accuracy 7, Symantec 19, WebSense 12, um, and newspapers. This surprisingly has a lot of them. They just show a lot of ads. Deseret News had 28. Um, KSL only had 23, which is surprising because last month we had malvertising on KSL, and so that was fun because it was close to home. Um, but only 23, I was, I, was, I was expecting that to be higher. Um, Salt Lake Tribune, how many want to guess Salt Lake Tribune? 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 40 and above, 77 on the Salt Lake Tribune. That is the content, I think. Um, New York Times only 16. So, so it, it's almost like playing Russian roulette with, with your ads, you know. All you need is one of these guys to load in a malicious web ad and you could get pwned. Um, the Ugly. Uh, this was Magnitude Exploit Kit. Someone got infected by going to this site from Magnitude Exploit Kit, so I went to see uh, how many. <laughs> oh. I just stopped there. It was just, I'm not digging through 92 of these to see which one is doing it. Yeah, that's, that's how you get malware. Um, so here's anglers using this guy right now. Um, once a certain web ad company gets enough of their traffic is malicious, we'll just mark them bad. And so you don't get on blue coat networks anymore. Uh, so these guys are rated bad. This is what it looked like on your, on your on your traffic. They just go to a website and they search something and they're getting infected. They use common exploits. Um, I used to say that, that uh, Silverlight is going to be the new popular one. Does anyone know what a Silverlight extension looks like? Could you recognize Silverlight file on your network? The two researchers, yeah. Anyone else? It's .zap, .xap. And it's basically just a, a zip file with DLLs in it. Um, but what uses Silverlight? Netflix does. And so when they started doing Silverlight exploits, I thought, wow, that's a huge market there because who does not have Netflix on your computer? Anyone? A few of you. Probably lying, but okay. <laughs> All right, but okay, that's a different thing. Um, they, it hasn't grown in that much popularity. Um, it's what? I don't know if they're killing me. HTML5 is kind of killing it because now you can do it all with HTML5. So, so we'll see what happens. But it's not as popular as it once was. Angular Exploit Kit will also do this fileless infection. So what they'll do is instead of dropping a downloader onto your computer, they will actually inject code straight into your processes. So they can inject code straight into your, uh, I think they did Internet Explorer or Explorer. And uh, so there's no, there forensically, there's no file to grab off the hard drive. Um, it's very effective against host and intrusion protection systems, things like that. Um, and then they would use, the, the payload they were using was BDEP, just a botnet, and they were doing command and control through SSL. So, so it's a fileless infection, and then all the call and command and control traffic you can't look at because it's SSL, basically, unless you do an inspection. Um, surprisingly, though, the payload, they'll drop payloads in HTTP for some reason, but then the, all the other called out traffic is SSL. Um, so this is what a compromised site would look like for Angular Exploit Kit. Um, usually the iframes are invisible, you can't see them. For some reason, some of them show up in the corner of the website. And if this text looks familiar to anyone, and probably people won't admit to it looks, looks familiar, because they just grab text from Pride and Prejudice and just throw it in there. So along with the blob of JavaScript that does the scanning, there's like just random paragraphs from like Pride and Prejudice stuck in there. I guess it's to evade AV to think, oh, this is legitimate and it's got all this text and stuff. I, I don't know. Um, kind of what the domains look like is one of our registers. Uh, they like OVH and Lee's Web. These are two big web hosts and and they get abused a lot. Um, some of them use GoDaddy placeholders, so what they do is they just compromise the, uh, the um, either your DNS host or whatever, and, and so they add, they take a legitimate site, put um, gibberish subdomains onto it, and then point that subdomain to a different IP. 
and they've been doing this forever, and Black Hole's been doing this forever. Um, Cisco did a blog or, or someone and called it domain shadowing, and it got a lot, bunch, of, bunch of traffic and a bunch of people talking about it because they had a fancy name. So when I do blogs, I have to market myself better and come up with fancy names. Um, several different groups are using Ang Angular Exploit Kit. They move around quite often. Um, they'll even do Android stuff. Um, this is some Android ransomware. Um, this stuff is getting more and more scary because they'll even put child porn onto your computer and then say, hey, you have child porn, please pay us this money because you did something illegal. Um, so that's kind of scary stuff. The Brolock ransomware, people are doing that too. Um, Afraid.org. Uh, does anyone know what dynamic DNS is? Can you explain what dynamic DNS? You definitely block it out on your network. There's a lot of most of the stuff there. Afraid.org is different. So afraid.org is I own a website. I go to them and say, I'll rent my subdomains out to people. And so all these people sign up and just say, yeah, I want a subdomain. And you just give out your domain to them for some reason. So Nuclear Exploit Kit uses these for their redirects and stuff. And uh, why, I have no idea, but that's what they do. Um, let's see, I'm getting low on time. Uh, this is CDORT. They are using with Rig Exploit Kit. They basically compromise whole web servers and then put a whole different Apache web server on it and inject that code into every website onto that web server. Pretty impressive. Magnitude Exploit Kit using our same friends that we have marked as malicious at Blue Code. Same malvertising. Pretty much all of them use malvertising now. Uh, some of the traffic from, for Magnitude Exploit Kit, see these are the 302 redirects. Um, here's some of the payloads being dropped. And if you notice in here, this is a, this is a, a legitimate Microsoft binary being dropped. Um, that's a KB file. When I looked that up, that is actually PowerShell. So the downloader uses PowerShell to download more malware to your computer. And since it was an XP machine without PowerShell, he went and downloaded PowerShell for me. So how nice. Uh, Fiesta Exploit Kit hosts on Cloudflare. Um, makes it a pain in the butt for us as well. Um, they compromise forms a lot for some reason. Um, this is Excel form for the Excel Microsoft Office. It's not owned by Microsoft, but it's so popular that Microsoft will point you to Excel form to say, get more information here if you need questions. Um, and it's compromised all the time. And I rated it malicious once and I got in so much trouble because it has so much traffic. But it's compromised all the time. And even just to get this screenshot, I got compromised. Just, to, <laughs> just trying to get the screenshot. Uh, so that's Java trying to run and that's PDF, Adobe PDF trying to run and yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, I've only got like five minutes left so we're gonna skip this part. This is more marketing for how cool our tools are. And, Oh no, this was my favorite part. So, oh, oh, well, that's, that's some of the code there. So that's some of the obfuscated JavaScript in the Excel form. Uh, host you on lease on host for web. So these threat groups, how are these threat groups working? Um, it's funny to see how they work. They're definitely, there's more of them coming out. Um, a lot of them have ups and downs. So we'll see them do a campaign and then they'll just go dark and we won't see from them for a while. And you talk about it, it could be that. Uh, my theory's always been that, um, I mean, so, so there's speciality and you have gotta have people to do something with the, the data they just stole. And so I think a lot of them don't have the manpower, so they do a bunch of stuff, they take it down, they analyze the data that they just collected and then go back up again. Um, am I done, is that what you're saying? All right, so they move around a lot. Crypto Wall is the new crypto locker, basically. They pretty much, ex every exploit kit drops them. They've been using every exploit kit possible. And it's interesting, the only people I can find that don't use them that's a big popular one is the Dire Drydex people. Um, they're a new banking trojan, pretty popular. Why they do it or don't use exploit kits, I, I don't know. Um, that's my talk. Thank you.